the the uh, the the house put into the uh, bill an evidentiary block. Correct. And, by the way, we've never met, I don't think. I'm Dick Sears. I'm Andrea Dexter Cooper, Legislative Council. Nice to meet you. Doing transportation matters. Yeah. I'm Jeanette White from Wyndham County. Nice to meet you. Joe Burns, Chip Alice Smith, Windsor County. Nice Joe Bang from Caledonia County. Does that mean you're serving the Senate Transportation Committee? Mostly, yes. Senate. Uh, my condolences. And you can tell them I said that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have an amendment here that. Dated 417. Um, so what you have before you, the two pieces of paper, is the one that says draft number 6.1 H.529 in the yeah. top left-hand corner. Section 28 is what was um, put into the T-bill by House Transportation and then not changed by Senate Transportation. What you have, uh, draft number 2.1 S.54417. This is um, language that Bryn has been working yeah. on related to other roadside testing issues. Right. And um, she had said that the committee would be interested in seeing this language. It is exactly the same as section 28, except on lines 6 into 7, it's adding some language. Okay. So which, which I believe is highlighted. Which one are we're on evidentiary blood sample? Yes. Yeah, so you've got two versions of the same section. The one that is does not have highlighting on it and is in the middle of other text. That is what is currently in the T-bill as passed the House and the amendment from the Senate. The, the T-bill um, right now is the Senate appropriations. Okay. So that's why I, want it. Okay. I am very confused here. Okay. Well, after you get a warrant. No, no, no. I'm confused about what we're looking at. Okay, Which one I would look at, at the one that stated uh, 417 draft 2.1 S54, which is our yeah, I've got bill that. on marijuana. But this this is the language Brent has been working on for that roadside testing that the House is thinking about. And and, and what is this? Um, this is what is currently in the T bill as passed the House and Senate Transportation's amendment to the T right. bill. So the language. Vote, if you were to vote to after the bill comes out of appropriation. I see, they put this in here. They put Maybe. it in the T-bill. Draw blood. Okay. I and the concern that I have, there are two. One is, this, this satisfies one of my concerns. The second is to make sure that a police officer who may or may not be an EMT is not able to draw the blood. Yeah. And the only difference between the two is what is highlighted. It's mm -hmm. the clause that goes at a medical facility, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. If we were to be able to add that language to, as an amendment from, I guess, <coughs> from the five of us, or whoever wants to join in that, I would like to amend the T-bill or have Senate Transportation amend it. I'll talk to Dick Massa, but, yep. Yeah, this, if I'm reading this right, it still does not, uh, it still allows the law enforcement officer to withdraw blood. Right, that's why I wanted to change. We need to have, it shouldn't be somebody who isn't trained drawing blood. Right. So, but this, this language doesn't do that. Well, don't forget, this language is for a, a cotton, for an oral swab for a while. Okay. But we would change this so that it would have to be Change this language okay, to correct. make clear that it's got to be somebody who's trained okay. EMT. And okay. This is all after a warrant. Okay. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, I get that. I'm confused. Why don't we get, what are you confused about? Though? Well, this all seems to be related to blood samples, mm -hmm. yeah. but you're saying it was language drafted for it for oral swans? In 2.1 two that you have yeah. in front of you with a yellow highlight was drafted for the oral swab in the House Judiciary Committee? Um, it was drafted in conjunction with language on oral swabs. This is one page of, I think, almost 20 pages that Bryn had worked on. Yeah, this one only deals with the drawing of blood, though. Right, okay. I the House has taken on saliva. Yeah. They like saliva. And can I ask about the current state of the law? So. Um, 
it's adding intermediate or advanced emergency medical technician mm -hmm. or paramedic. Yep. So currently it can only be uh, the first listed ones, physician, yeah. licensed nurse, medical technician, physician, physician assistant, medical technologist, and laboratory this, assistant. This uh, at a medical facility, the highlighted language, mm -hmm. without that, the current state of affairs allows you to draw where? Um, my understanding is that you need to get to where those people are, which would most likely be a hospital. Could, could they do it reverse, have a doctor come out to the roadside yeah. and I think and under nod. this language you could I mean, and I'm sorry under existing under existing law you could yeah. which the highlighted language would change, would change. Got it. so can I ask a question where yeah. where does a DRE presently draw blood they don't oh, do we get a technician to do no, no. They, they, ask for, they get a certain a DRE part. when they get Presently, a DRE when they they don't bring a person to the station. They bring them further testing. to an usually, I believe, they bring them to an emergency yeah. room oh, where okay. a phlebotomist draws the blood, or someone else who's trained in drawing blood. Okay. <clears throat> the police officer doesn't, but they have to get the search warrant first. I mean, this this does not change that at all. Right. And this is really just, uh, if you look at the highlighted, um, sorry, the underlined language in both, is it's expanding who can draw the blood. And then if you look at the version that has the highlighting, it's narrowing the locations where the blood can be drawn. I'm, so. I'm concerned about this, this whole thing, but I, I, you know, since both committees have already passed it, I, I was up getting my blood drawn earlier in the session, uh, a Monday morning, because that's the only time you can do it. And I'm waiting, I had appointments and everything else, and I w waited in the hospital for over an hour. And the trained phlebotomist was unable to draw blood from a patient, which held up everything. So I can understand the frustration of a police officer trying to, to do that and having to wait an hour with somebody who's under the influence, they believe under the influence of alcohol or another drug. And, so I understand all this. I'm just concerned that um, we don't have any fences around it. So I, I'm <clears throat> really concerned about having a law enforcement draw blood because I I well, had I, don't want that I had all. blood drawn no, and the no. the phlebotomist could not get it out and they had to call for the chief person and when he finally got in there it sprayed all over him and everybody else. I don't want some. Um, law enforcement person doing well, that the, roadside. Well, I want to make so. clear that we're going to put in here state uh, clearly that the law enforcement officer, even if they're a trained EMT, yeah. is not able to draw the blood. Okay. So that's one, number one. Number two is that they have to do it in this description here, and you had a little change that Well, you I just in. wrote a law enforcement officer may, at a medical facility, police, or a fire department, or other safe and clean location, have blood drawn. I mean, have blood right. withdrawn. So the way, yeah. however, the light, the way I read this is in the first part, you're listing who can draw the blood. Mm -hmm. They can only do it at the request of a law enforcement, and it can only happen at these places. So I do not read this oh, as a law enforcement officer may at a medical yeah. facility. It's at the request of the law enforcement officer triggering all those right. people above gotcha. it that draw right. the blood. But gotcha. if the okay. law enforcement I, officer I just happens to be also an EMT, they're not going to be allowed. It's one of the clear statements law enforcement can't with drug for it. I, I'm sorry. Joe? I, I, don't even, I don't even know who to ask this question of because it's apparently language that's being introduced and <clears throat> intermediate or advanced emergency medical technician says to me that there's a lower level somewhere is that they're trained so there's no such thing as a rookie there's EMT e that's e not e yet reached the intermediate level there's EMRs that aren't EMTs. well we have some witnesses here why don't we ask I guess the $64,000 question is are all intermediates and paramedics authorized to draw blood I don't know the answer yeah. to that Guess we have they can answer, but I believe it's in their scope of practice. Good. Good. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Major, do you 
He's still a major. Uh, I wish. I'm a lieutenant. Oh, oh lieutenant. I'm lieutenant. sorry. I love to promote people here. <laughs> you just got me two ranks, so. Yeah, well, that's yeah. fine. Two, two. Two steps at a time, right? Um, lieutenant, Can you help us? Uh, we'll try. And if what I can't answer, uh, Dr. Conti from the forensic lab yep. will be able to. And you have um, Sergeant. Uh, Jay Riggin, yes, who is our uh, DRE uh, expert. Would you like to join us right at the yes, table, come on. Sergeant? What barracks are you on? Notice uh, I uh, right didn't demote you to corporal or. Oh, thanks. I'm happy where I am. Happy where I am. But you could be a captain soon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant, please. Um, so, the purpose of um, supporting this is. Uh, it's to allow, and these are trained, um, and to answer your question about the EMTs, there are certain levels, I'll let the doctor get a little more into that, but um, this ex requires extensive training. Mm -hmm. This isn't just like your baseline EMT um, that can just roll up to any scene, uh, but the doctor can probably speak to their qualifications a little bit better than that. Um, we agree in the fact of keeping law enforcement, sep law enforcement separate from drawing blood. Um, we just need to, to keep those separate. Uh, this is specifically for what is outlined in the bill, um, physicians, EMTs, um, paramedics, so to speak. Um, our goal is to minimize the time that someone's in custody um, and to essentially um, avoid the stigma, bringing them into uh, an emergency department, uh, taking up a bed, taking the attention of emergency doctors to draw blood. Um, unfortunately, at times we deal with uh, intoxicated um, or under the impairment individuals who are hostile. So now for us to go through the part of where we're drawing blood, we're now bringing them a hostile person into a non-hostile environment. Um, and we are at the whim of what's happening or not happening in the emergency department, and we may have to sit and wait for a while. Um, Unfortunately, patience um, plays a factor with some of these individuals, and the longer they have to wait, the more hostile and disgruntled they get. And to disrupt uh, a, a scene where they're trying to do nothing but give the best health care to the people in need. If, if that person refuses, do you have a situation like the one we saw in Utah where the police officers arrested the nurse for not? Oh, if, they, if they're not, if the, the person refuses, refuses and take, then the hospital yeah, staff right, refuses, yeah. um, you can probably speak to that a little bit better than I can. So I'm going to refer to the sergeant on those situations. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> There's no situation that Vermont will find themselves in a position where in Utah, an emergency room nurse is dragged out of right. her practice. Uh, what happens is if a person, uh, one of two parallel roads will happen. If a person, if a warrant is granted and a person says, no, I still don't want you to do this, but they are not physically resisting, then we'll still draw the blood. Some hospitals, for their own uh, practices, say, well, the person is still not uh, consenting, so we're not going to do it. And that's where it stops. That may result in another charge. So, under this, you're stopped, the person on the side of the road, you have reason to believe that they're intoxicated or that they're driving impaired by another drug other than alcohol. You uh, get a search warrant from a judicial officer, and then you would right now would go to an emergency room or some other place to draw, have the blood drawn. This would allow you to go back to the barracks and have it done. And what we're, I, I think, what we're considering here is adding language that would be a little more definitive of where it could be done. Um, I particularly don't want to have it done on the roadside. I don't want, you know, I, mean, I can see where there may be situations where somebody's in a bad accident and you've gotten there, they would usually get to the hospital anyway and where you get the order. But I'm, I'm just um, concerned that it not be done roadside and I'm concerned it be done in a more sterile environment than maybe with some of the holding cells that I've been in in different uh, and so Please you would certainly um, leave that up to the experts. Um, if a paramedic is in a holding cell and says, this is not the environment I want to do this in, then we would just literally transfer that subject into the ambulance that is waiting outside the barracks parking lot. We're still cutting off the transport to the hospital, taking up the time of the hospital. 
Um, but for us to say, no, this is where they'll do it, we need to leave that up to the experts. I find it troubling sometimes that these issues come out of the transportation committee going through the normal process of someone introducing a bill and then going through the two judiciary committees. But so I just problem. wanted to clarify the question I asked before, and you were nodding. So under current law, can you um, withdraw blood at the roadside? No, I'm sorry, I must have misunderstood oh. you. No, there wouldn't be any situation okay. that um, I'm so, aware of that we'd be drawing blood at roadside. So currently, you only do it in a hospital setting. Correct. This is seeking to add police and fire departments as safe and clean locations. Correct. Okay. Senator, but safe and clean location would also be potentially roadside in an ambulance, would it not? Roadside what? In an ambulance. Yes. In an ambulance. Well, when, and I guess when I think of the words roadside, that is like at the time that the stop is initiated, you're only a few minutes into the stop. Um, so my definition of roadside is different. I'm, we're, I'm thinking more of a controlled atmosphere, a parking lot of a barracks. Um, you know, that's, that's after um, those that are qualified to take the blood. They come in, I mean, they, they need a sterile site, and it's up to them to decide whether or not, um, I mean, blood's drawn in battlefields, blood's drawn anywhere from battlefield to an, an operating room. Um, that's for an expert to decide where they want to do it, as long as the site is, is sterile, that's that's for them to, to, to decide, so. Um, well, how, bear with me. My sure. daughter is in the process of becoming an EMT. I don't think she's reached the intermediate level yet. My naive brain, she's not authorized to stick a needle on somebody just yet. She's on an ambulance crew, goes to a scene, you have an unconscious individual taken from an accident at the scene. If I read this correctly, you're able to have the officer request, this is a two-part question, I don't know how your officers determine whether the individual they are asking actually fit the intermediate level or something above, that's question number one. Question number two is, if you have somebody who's actually authorized to withdraw the blood, I'm reading this language as saying, you can actually do that in the back of the ambulance as soon as you pull the individual out of the wreck, as soon as the ambulance is determined to be a clean and safe location. So am I misreading something? You're missing the step of the warrant. The fact that we still need a warrant to draw that blood. But and, and to get that at roadside is, is not practical. Um, we still need to go back and actually type up an affidavit, speak with the state's attorney, um, get a judge to sign off on it. Um, so we're, we're talking uh, probably several, a couple hours into the whole process from the, the time either the stop or the, or the crash. So to draw blood at roadside, this I, I don't see any situation where someone's going to be denied medical care because we need to, oh wait, quick, we're going to draw blood. That's not ever the case. To the, to the first part of your concern, though, sir, was that in the way that rescue crews operate is that not everyone on that crew is necessarily trained or qualified per the way that rescue crew operates to be the person with the needle in their hand. Right, so that's where we always default to the experts who are on the ambulance crews mm -hmm. to say that they're, if their crew that's certified by the state of Vermont and regulated and audited, if they're, if they're capable of doing it for the crew, then that's not for us to say uh, uh, one way or the other, because the crew says they're, they're good. Senator. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you noted um, that blood is drawn on the battlefield, and I think that's true. There are also emergency operations on the battlefield not because you want to do them there, but because somebody's going to die. Um, here we have choices about where to properly um, accomplish these things. My, my concern here is that there has been talk of electronic um, warrants um, being obtained at the roadside with a call to a judicial officer. If I put that together in my mind with these things, it seems like there's a one might potentially view this as a relatively large expansion of the ability, the locations, and the people who can do this, which would allow for a substantially larger number of people to have blood drawn in the event that um, police believe that's necessary with electronic warrants making it easier. Can I, 
just correct something yep. about electronic more. When I've Sorry. talked about speeding up that process, I never meant it to be a phone call. I meant it to be an affidavit that maybe I typed out here, sent a copy to the state attorney, and a co obviously they have better equipment. A copy to the state attorney, yep. a copy to the judicial officer. It's just like getting a search warrant by fax, only it would be electronic, it could be done at the scene. Yep. I've never felt that you could make a phone call to a judge and say, give me a, you know, I might work on law and order on TV, but I don't think it would be practice. I'm just saying. Um, yeah, I just want to make it clear that I've no, never advocated for a phone call. Well, I'm, I'm, I guess my point would be there's no difference today between a phone call and a, a text or a, well, or I think it's a little, Pepper will go through you. No, what they have to do to my, get a warrant. my point is that I don't personally want um, the recreational cannabis market to be accompanied by a broad expansion of police authorities to draw blood or to take oral swabs at the roadside. And so, although in isolation I might look at this differently, but it seems to me of a piece with the things that have been coming out of the house, particularly house transportation, for the last couple of years. And it, my, my fear is that it's piece one and there are pieces two and three to come. And it will all be assembled as a system that will allow the governor to sign the recreational cannabis bill, but it will come, in, in my view, at the cost of um, you know, the system we have now, which I am comfortable with, but not with the expansions here for blood drawing and oral swabs and potentially electronic. This doesn't have. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, if, I, if I may, if I may address a very reasonable concern. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just confused. I guess I. Uh, it seems to me that what we're doing is allowing more people to draw blood. Licensed people. Licensed people only. Licensed people. At. What, and we're, expand, we're saying it has to be at one of these facilities. Currently, it can be anywhere that these be, or emergency rooms, essentially, right? right. Because right. that's where these people work, is right. at emergency rooms. An EMT could be someplace else. Correct. And although that we, we have the common goal of <coughs> the safety of patients, there's no strong army here. They can show up at a scene and be like, this is not happening here and they make the ultimate decision. Um, and when it comes to drawing blood, we need to fall in line with what they say. And if they say, this isn't where we're gonna do it, then that's not where we're gonna do it. So what I, I hear your concern is like this erosion of a due process of an overreaching enforcement branch of our government, which is what we represent. Uh, the systems that are in place to protect such things are not affected by this and are not attempted to be, which is that uh, there's been uh, a roadside process that's, read, that's led to a continued custody of somebody who is suspected to be under the influence of drugs or alcohol or a combination brought back to a, a local police station or a state police barracks or some other police, uh, police office that then the implied consent of the process is read, the person their consents, a request for a lawyer, there's a, perhaps a refusal, there's then a consult with state's attorney who then refers to a judicial officer who then reviews via his or her laptop at the house, the warrant application grants or denies. The point is, up until the point of the draw, all of this system is still in place to protect such overreaching uh, law enforcement officers. Uh, doctor, uh, doctor. <laughs> sorry, I was thinking of Dr. Conti, but sorry. How long does it take you to process a DUI average time that maybe you didn't stop and you're called in as a DRE? Can you give us an idea of how long that takes? From the, from the perspective of an offender from arrest to release? Yeah. From arrest to release, where the arresting officer is not a DRE, the process ranges anywhere from uh, time of arrest to time of release for the offender, two to five hours. And this seeks to eliminate the back hour, hour and a half of that process, which is where everything, everything has still occurred, but now we have to get blood per warrant, and it requires the transport. We can all imagine our, our homes, right, where the hospitals are relative to our homes or our police stations. So there's the travel time on the road, there's the wait time at the hospital, then the travel time back to the office. So I decided that's why there's this range, right? It could be quite lengthy. Right so we're trying to eliminate this continued unnecessary custody if it could be done. This, this really is, is a, a, an attempt to 
shorten the amount of time it takes to by avoiding the hospital emergency room. Correct. It, it seems to me it's also. Or the hospital. <clears throat> I mean, if you've been in a hospital emergency room lately, yeah. it's hours of wait for people who have screaming children. And <clears throat> to have somebody come in there just to have dr blood drawn. If I were the mother of that screaming child, I might kick you in the shins. I'm, I'm running I out mean, of time. I mean, given they're on their best behavior as well. Unfortunately, yes. running out of time. Dr. Conti, do you have anything to add? Um, I think I would just like to speak. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm waiting around for us. Lieutenant, are you also do it at DRE? I am not. You are not. I, I chose to, I was a detective for the last eight years before this assignment, so I haven't worked with, he's okay. been on the road a lot longer. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. So for the record, uh, Trish Conti, I'm director of the Vermont Forensic Laboratory. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I think it's the first time I've been in this committee yet this year. Um, I just like, uh, no, no, not this I, year. no, I've been oh, you, around, your name not this year. Came up. Your name yeah, oh, came up. hopefully it was all good. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we needed you. Oh, well, I'm always happy to come in if there are questions. Yeah. Um, so I think I'd just like to reiterate what's been said by the previous witnesses. Um, this, the intention of this, and it's been something that we've been pushing for for years, and it really doesn't um, have anything to do with the current cannabis bill. Um, this has been a need that's been identified because there is such a time gap between when a stop occurs and when blood is drawn for these cases. So anything we could do to shorten that time for detention, and also to get a sample that's taken in more timely fashion, closer to the time of operation, that's helpful. Because there is no relation back um, to take a drug test result to an earlier point in time like there is for alcohol. Uh, so in addition to that, uh, the intention of this is to add in other qualified and licensed folks to be able to draw blood samples and also eliminate the need to go to a hospital. Um, I think I also, just to touch on the sterility standpoint, I know it's been said that blood's drawn at battlefields, but I think everybody's also familiar with the Red Cross setting up shop kind of wherever they do for blood draws. That could be in a library or a Kinney Drugs or a movie theater. So again, it's up to those people that are drawing blood to make the site of collection um, sterile and adequate. We have people come into the lab when oh, we need blood for our research purposes. I have an EMT colleague that will come in and draw blood in our lab for us when we need that. Um, and I think wherever you go, you're gonna run into people that are better than others at drawing blood. I think we all have horror stories yeah. where they couldn't find a vein or you know end up with bruises and sign of grapefruits the next day. Um, so I think you're going to find that when you're asking for someone to come in, it's probably going to be people that are very proficient at their job coming in to do this. Um, like the person that I have that comes in, he is uh, an EMT paramedic that works for the critical transport team at UVM Met and Z. Uh, he's very good, so I think allowing, broadening the horizon of people that can come in to do this is uh, definitely helpful for many regards. There's two articles in your package. Mm -hmm. One of them one's supposed to be in this package. The one is in, from the Boston Globe about the illegal market mm -hmm. in Massachusetts for marijuana. The other is I found very interesting from yesterday's Boston Globe, um, and it's about a breath test for detecting pot. And the people in Oakland, California are working on that. So we knew that it's just a matter of time till somebody gets rich um, <laughs> developing a test. Yeah, I know. And, um, Pepper or Matt, did you have any comments on this? No, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> All is silent. I mean, James Pepper, Department of State Attorneys and Sheriffs, I think what's important just to take from this conversation is we're not trying to erode the probable cause is the basis of the warrant to get the blood. Um, the only thing that this bill does is try and shorten that time from the from the time we receive the warrant, or the law enforcement receives the warrant, to the time the blood is actually drawn. I think it's just important to just highlight that point. I was here to monitor two things. One is um, that nobody would fiddle with the warrant requirement, um, and two, to make sure that law enforcement wasn't authorized, even if they were trained. To draw the blood, so those two things not being there, I'm satisfied. But we'll see what happens on the road. Did you um, prepare an amendment that does what I think we've all talked about, mm -hmm. and then the committee can look at it tomorrow morning and decide whether we want to support it or not. If they want to reject it, um, but that's up to the committee. 
So where would that be put right now? On, on the it's the bill. It's over here right it, now. It's, it's inside appropriations oh, right okay. now. <coughs> I believe it's still in Senate. I don't think we voted on it yet. It's in Senate Finance. Huh? Senate Finance. Oh, and then it's coming to appropriations. Okay, so it hasn't even arrived in the appropriations yet. So there is time to review the So I need to end the committee because it's afternoon.